It's one thing to be a Christian. It's another thing to be a model Christian. Are you a model? <laughs> Yan po ang ating lesson ngayong gabi. Isang bagay po yung ikaw ay tawaging Kristiyano. Pero napakagandang bagay na ikaw ay modelong Kristiyano. And it is my prayer and desire and passion to teach and lead us to the point that we become a model to other Christians. That our church becomes a model to other churches. That when they look at our single men, they would say, I wish we had a single man like that in our church. That when they look at our single ladies, the pastors would say, I wish we had that kind of single ladies in our church. When they look at the men in our church, they would say, oh, I wish I had that kind of men in my church. Think tonight. Don't be just a Christian. Be a model Christian. So I'm going to speak to you tonight on the Macedonian believer's model of Christian life. Atin pong tignan ang modelo o ehemplo ng mga Macedonian believers paano maging totoong Kristiyano. And I pray that you will listen with an open heart and mind to this message. Turn your Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 8. And we'll be reading from verse number 1 down to 9. 2 Corinthians 8, 1 to 9. Follow me with your eyes. Moreover, brethren, we do you to wit of the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia, how that in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy, and their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality. For to their power I bear record, yea, and beyond their power, they were willing of themselves, praying us with much entreaty that we would receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. And this they did, not as we hoped, but first gave their own selves to the Lord and unto us by the will of God. In so much that we desired Titus, that as he had begun, so he would also finish in you the same grace also. Therefore, as she abound in everything, in faith, in utterance, in knowledge, and in all diligence, and in your love to us, see that she abound in this grace also. I speak not by commandment, but by occasion of the forwardness of others. And to prove the sincerity of your love. Everybody, verse 9. For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. The Macedonian believers model of Christian life. Lord, give us a simple, practical, down-to-earth, straight-to-the-heart message tonight. I pray na kayo po ang kumausap sa bawat isa sa amin. Because Lord, you want to take us from an ordinary Christian to become a modern Christian. And we will look into the model of the Macedonian believers. Mga ingredients, mga sangkap, mga katangian na kung saan ay dapat makita sa amin. Tonight, I pray that you will bless your servant. Give me utterance, dear Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Ang Apostol Pablo ay sumulat ng isang libro o mensahe sa mga mananampalataya ng Corinth. Who was a wealthy place, mayaman na lugar, 
Ang mga members ay may kaya, may ayaman, may posisyon at may influensya. So balit sa kanyang sulat ay kanyang ibinahagi itong buhay ng mga Macedonian Christians. And he used them as a model to encourage and inspire and challenge the church in Corinth. Tonight, I'm going to share with you the seven characteristics of the Macedonian believers that made them an example and model of the Apostle Paul to the church at Corinth. Pakinggan niyo pong maigi. Kunin niyo po ang mga points. Awan ag mulang lang. Awan ag tungtunganga. Lahat ay makinig at matuto sa ehemplo ng mga Macedonian believers. Okay. Una sa lahat, they are models of sufficient grace. They are models of sufficient grace. Ibig pong sabihin, sa buhay ng mga Kristiyanong ito, ang makita o remarkable sa kanila ay ang biyaya ng Panginoon. Ikaw ba o ako ay isang Kristiyano na kakitaan ng biyaya ng Panginoon? Is your life a remarkable model of the grace of God? I mean, look, their lives are proofs and evidence that God's grace is greater than our needs and struggles in life. There are two conditions. May dalawang pangyayari o sitwasyon sa kanilang buhay that I would like for you to see. The Bible says in verse number one, how than in a great trial of affliction. Are you with me? The Bible says that they were in a great trial of what? But what is remarkable is what? The abundance of their? Anong nakikita mo sa kanila? Sa kanilang kalagayang naghihirap. Anong nakikita natin? The abundance of their? Nakikita ba yan sa atin? Sakit na basit, hanay may nakigimogan. Kaya na mo't pelang. Ah, saan ang sinasabi mong biyaya ng Panginoon? <laughs> That is why if you're going to be a model Christian, you will display in your life what the grace of God can do. Na in spite of problems, In spite of pain, in spite of his struggles and physical condition, nandun ka na nasisiyahan na naglilingkod sa Panginoon. That's what you call grace. And not only that, but we can see that they were what? In deep poverty. Nakikita sa kanilang buhay. Are you following? You see in their life the evidence of the grace of God. Lahat naman tayo may problema. What makes you a model Christian is your attitude. Kung bakit ang isang tao, ang isang Kristiyano nakaka-bless kung tawagin dahil sa kanyang attitude. How's your attitude tonight? And that attitude is because of the grace of God in them. Yung attitude ng kagalakan. Minsan tayo, pag may problema, talagang makikita mo na may problema talaga tayo. 
Pero sila, hindi mo makitang may problema. <laughs> hindi mo makitang may mabigat na pinagdadaanan. Ibig sabihin, sila po yung sana all. I mean, look, money is not the issue when you have problem. Personality, temperament, strong personality, weak person, that's not the point when you have problem. It's the grace of God. And so I pray that tonight, kunate kumamot ti sarili tayo kan ti Apo, Lord, kas jayak kuma. Kas jayak kuma, Apo. Nga no, agdate kiti problema kan parikot, dadagsan ti panagbiag. Adala tarak, uti ka unggan di puso. The abundance of their joy. So they are models of the sufficient grace. Impakita da nga ti parabor ti Apo kakabsat na buslon. I was talking with uh, I was talking with Lester nung kami ay nandun sa ospital. Because he was sharing with me how difficult his professional life is. And I know it's really difficult because he's a doctor. And he doesn't only work from 8 to 5. He is an on-call doctor. Kahit alas 9, alas 10 ng gabi, tatawagin yan. Doc, may emergency, pupunta. And he feels it's so tiring. Napakahirap. And I know that. You know what I was telling him? I said, you know what, Lester? I've, I felt the same way when I was a young pastor. Ang tingin ko sa mga problema, sa mga responsibilidad, sa mga challenge, sa aking responsibility o ministry o leadership, ay napakahirap. Now, looking forward, looking backward from where I am now, I laugh and I say, grabe ang hina ko nun. What happened to me? Did I become strong? No, no strength in me. I learned what the grace of God can do. And you have to grow in that grace. Hindi ho dapat yung kada problema, ganun na lang tayo lagi. Dapat lumago tayo sa biyaya. Hindi ho pwede yung kada may pangangailangan, ganun tayo lagi. Hindi pa tayo natututong magtiwala sa Panginoon. Hindi ho dapat ganun na lang tayo lagi. Lumago tayo. And you can see this Macedonian believer. You don't see much in them. You don't see a lot of peripheral, outward things in them. Pero you see the growth of grace in their life. The grace of God is so evident in their life. Sana po ma-realize natin ngayong gabi itong message na ito and we would say, oh, thank you Lord for making me realize na dapat hindi ako dapat ganun lagi. Help me grow in grace. Now, I was a young preacher. Pag may problema, may ek ako sa gabi niya, pambira, paano yan? Ngayon, by the grace of God, medyo nasurusuro kong kakapsat ti parabor ti apo. I was telling Lester, you know, during those times, I was a young preacher. I was new fight. I was new in the fight. <laughs> new fight. I was new in the fight. Of course, I never thought of quitting. But I always felt I was inadequate. I always felt I'm too young. I always felt my personality is not fit. That's why I was telling Lester, you know what, Lester? Sometimes our culture, our society will tell you, if you want to succeed, find your strength. Me, it's different. If I will base myself on my strength, I'll not be a pastor because I'm an introvert. <laughs> I'm an introvert. Mahiyain ako eh. 
Sabi niya nga, Pastor, pareho tayo. Tita Elsa, sabi niya nga sa akin, uray pa nag-order lang yan, tamag dumabainak pa, iding mga pa nag-order ko na na. Introvert. There are times, mga kapatid. I mean, look, on a natural law, find your passion, find your strength. But there are times, God will put you to a place that is completely opposite to you. So He will manifest His grace upon you. And if you don't know that, you will be frustrated. You will be disappointed. You will be discouraged because you only know the natural law. You don't know the law of grace. <laughs> Kinukwento ko sa mga single men. Nung ako po ay bata, introvert ako. Ako yung, pag sinabi mo kasing introvert, yun yung tao na pag nag-usap tayo, ayaw kong matagal. Gusto ko matapos agad. Because I am not a sociable personality. Isang tanong, isang sagot, okay na? Okay, that's it. I have to go. That's me. Hello? And then, pag, pag sabi ni Pastor Jun, oy, may birthday, sama ka, punta tayo. Ayaw kong sumama. I don't want talking with people. I only want to listen. Contento ako na nakaupo lang, nakakonsentrate. Siguro I would succeed in becoming a mechanic. Pag ako mechanic ko, successful ako. Kasi focus ako dun eh. Pero pag magkipag-usap sa tao, ikaw yung, yung bang, pag business ba, yung you try to negotiate, ay, wala ako dyan. Pero ang sabi ng Panginoon, pastor ka. That's why, sabi ko kay Lester, I realize, alam mo Lester, one time sabi nung kapatid ni, sabi nung kapatid ni Brother Enan sa akin, Brother Enan is watching, she, she was once a teacher at MMSU. After sharing to her the gospel, you know what she told me? Alam mo sabi niya sa akin? Pastor sabi niya, let me ask you, where did you get your doctor's degree? I laughed. Pati si Brother Enan gumiti. Sabi ko, ma'am, wala pang akong master's degree. And you know, the Lord must have designed it that way. Why? So that whatever success, whatever achievement, whatever they reach out of this man here is not because of this man, but because of the grace of God. That is what God wants to every one of us that you become a model of the grace of God. Kaya minsan, dinisign talaga ng Panginoon na magkaroon sila ng trial of affliction, ng persecution. Dinisign ng Panginoon na talagang sila'y maghirap. Hindi dahil gusto niya silang maghirap, hindi dahil gusto niya silang masaktan, kundi upang ipamalas nila ang biyaya ng Panginoon sa kanilang buhay. Thus, will make them a model Christian. Pag naunawaan mo yan, may kagalakan ka sa pagsubok. Ang problema kasi minsan, because of our personality, we are only focused on finding solutions to the problem. We are not mindful of God's purpose for the problem. That's why we don't have joy in the problem. Sabi ko, Lester, alam mo, Lester, may mga personality na strong. Yung mga strong personality, naturally, pag may problema, nakafocus lang yan in finding solutions to the problem. I learned, you do not only focus on finding solutions to the problem, you find out the purpose of God in that problem. Because when you find out the purpose of God, yun ang magbibigay ng joy sa'yo to endure the pain in the problem, the purpose of God. <laughs> oh, ngayon, appreciate nyo lang ibig sabihin ng grace. Kala nyo, ang remarkable sa atin, yung position natin, 
yung achievement sa buhay. Earthly gain, earthly na mga na mga accolades ng tao sa iyo, yun ang remarkable sa iyo. Hindi yun ang remarkable pag Kristiyano ka. Ang remarkable sa iyo, nakikita ang grace ng Panginoon sa iyo. Sa anong paraan nakikita ang biyaya ng Panginoon sa iyo? That is why you observe the things happening in your life. Do you know why they're happening? Because God wants to manifest His grace. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Nanalangin ako sa Panginoon, sabi ko, Lord, bigyan mo ako ng abilidad na makipag-usap sa tao. Dahil kulang sa akin yan. Hindi lang kulang, wala talaga. I don't have that ability, Lord. Di ba? So I prayed. And I praised the Lord. Unti-unti, nakikita ko. That's why when you see me, mga ah, kapatid, pakinig, when you see me talking to a VIP, that's not that man here. That's the grace of God because you know Pastor Provi, he is an introvert. He does not know how to talk to these people. He is a passive personality. And God must have designed it that way. Intention talagang sinadya ng Panginoon na ganun. At dapat makita mo pagka minsan na hindi lang solusyon sa problema ang kailangan mo. Kailangan mong makita, hey! God says, sinadya ko yung mangyari na yan sa'yo. Sinadya ko yung personality na yan na ganyan. Sinadya ko yung kainaan mo na yan. Bakit? Para doon ka humingi ng aking biyaya at doon mo makita ang kapangyarihan ng aking biyaya at doon makita ng iba ang ibig sabihin ng biyaya sa pamamagitan ng buhay mo. Illustration ka. As ang, yan ang ibig sabihin ng ating first point. Model of the sufficiency of God's grace. So in what ways your life is a model of God's grace? Amen? Do our lives show that God's grace is sufficient? Number two. Not only that their lives are models of sufficient grace, but these Macedonian believers are models of steadfastness. They are models of steadfastness. The word steadfast is from the word steady, unmovable, not subject to change, rooted. And ibig sabihin ng steadfastness. In verse number 2, makita natin, 2 Corinthians 8, how that in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality. Ibig sabihin, you see these believers, they are in great trial and normally, anong nakikita nating attitude sa mga believers na nasa great trial? But they displayed steadfastness. It's, it's inspiring to see a Christian that will be committed and faithful in the midst of his pain and problems in life. Commitment yan, mga kapatid. Secret nga, oh, tignan mo. May dengue pa yan hanggang ngayon. Pero kaya niyang umupo. Eh, pastor, dyan lang ang bahay niyo. Eh, kahit pa malayo yan, mga kapatid. Steadfastness. Steadfastness in their faith and steadfastness in their giving. Life's conditions did not affect their Christian attitude and character, which was a real manifestation of their genuine conversion. By the way, Isa sa mga bunga ng taong ligtas, totoong na-convert ay ito, steadfastness. 
Dahil ang taong hindi totoong na-convert, madaling mawala yan, mga kapatid. You remember what Pastor John always tell us? Why people leave the church? Bakit daw umaalis yung kristyano sa church? Number one, they don't believe right. At dahil mali ang kanilang mindset, ayaw maturuan, they leave. Why? Because they don't thrive. Because of the wrong mindset. Number two, they don't behave right. Ayaw makorek. Ayaw ma-rebuke. Ayaw ma-remind. Sensitive. Ma-pride. Mataas ang ego. Diba? Bakit? Sobrang pinagpala na. Eh ayaw. That's because of that, they leave. And number three, they were not born right. They saved. Kung save ka talaga, there are times humanly, maupay ka eh. Pero di pusong, igawid na kakakabsat. You will not. So praise the Lord, they are models of steadfastness. They were not bitter. They were not quitters. Amen. But what? They were not whiners. They were winners. Amo yung whiners? Nagri-reklamo. They were winners in their attitude. So, are we a model of being steadfast in times of trials? Yan ang remarkable sa Kristiyano. Na, Pastor, bakit puro trial? Listen. Pagingan nyo to, ha? It is almost impossible to grow in good times. Can you grow in good times? No. No. You grow in bad times. But you need to have the right attitude. Amen. That is why nakikita mo ang ano ba yung Tagalog ang remarkable? Nakikita mo ang isang katangi-tangi na pagagandang tularan sa isang Kristiyano especially in times of suffering in times of difficulty and hardship yung bang yung pastor hindi mag-aalala na nako may problema to baka magkukuit hindi mag-aalala yung pastor dahil alam niya na ang kapatid na to he is bent and resolved patay kung patay buhay kung buhay i will serve god Ask yourself tonight, am I that Christian that pastor does not have to worry if I quit or not? He does not even have to think twice because he is confident I will stick and I will stay serving God. That is what makes you remarkable. Kaya nga, narinig ko yung sabi ng isang pastor, And I quote, Ang Christian life daw ay hindi lang patagalan, kundi patapatan. It's being faithful in spite of trying times. Alam nyo, marami sa atin may mga sakit, may mga pangangailangan, may mga problema. Pag sinecheck ko nga yung giving record eh, ang nakikita mong model doon, hindi ho yung malaking amount, kundi yung totoong nagbibigay. Number two, ang nakikita mong remarkable doon, yung alam mong mahirap ang buhay, pero tapat sa giving. Steadfastness. Yun ang remarkable Christian. That's why, if, listen to me, kung VIP ka sa labas, huwag mong dalhin yan dito. Hindi ka VIP dito. Alis mo yung mindset na yan. Hindi ka VIP dito. Sa labas ka VIP. Yan ang trato ng world sa'yo. Pero ang Panginoon ang kausap mo rito eh. And God wants you to be steadfast. I see our members, I mean, uh, nabibless, din, nabibless ako sa lahat ng ating mga cheerful givers. We have a lot of cheerful givers in the church. And I, I can count them. Pero makita mo yung mga Kristiyano na ito ha, nakaka-bless yung steadfast yung pinag-uusapan. Oh. Ang daming mga challenge sa buhay, mga pangangailangan, ang mga basit, they just well, do na, no, 
income na. Pero mafil apan na amin. And it's not for the sake of filling it up. Pero talagang pag ititrace mo, mga kapatid, consistent. Hindi yung may ngay- meron ngayon, tas wala, kundi consistent. Ibig sabihin, itong kapatid na to, sa kanyang sarili, at damabati kang awan, basta itod ko di para ti Apo. Ah, kapatid, nakikita nyo ba yung ibig kong sabihin ngayong gabi? Model. At kung ikaw yan, kapatid, hindi man kita ma-mention ang pangalan, may you be comforted tonight, you are a remarkable Christian. Tapos, tapos ito pa, yun mo ha, nagtatights na yan ha, may love offering yan, may mission offering, consistent yan. Yung iba, gift to pastor, ha? may first fruit, ito pa nakakapagtaka. Pag nagpa-commitment, nagtataas ng kamay. Nagko-commitment. At fulfill ang commitment. Yan ang ibig sabihin ng model Christian. Oh. Amen? I pray that tonight, instead of, you know, complaining about the problems of life, why don't you determine and say, Lord God, itong sitwasyon na ito is an opportunity for me to show faithfulness to you. May kapatid akong nakausap kanina. Alam ko ng kapatid na to, nasa abroad yan. I know, she's watching probably tonight. Sapagkat, I, I, it was my schedule to go today to withdraw the offering. Sa akin, pinadala yung offering. Para sa commitment at offering para sa ating ministry. Sabi ko sa kanya, alam niyo po, sabi ko, nakakatuwa at nakakabless ang inyong generosity. Anong tisumbat na kanya? Kunana, pastor, napipya nga ititrabaho ti Apo, ti pakaibusan, ti kwarta. Grabing mindset. Napipya nga titrabaho ti Apo, ti pakaibusan. Kasi no kututubo, maibus mo ta kwarta nga talaga eh. Ti saludsod, pakaibusan na kwarta tayo. May ibus lang yan ti ana. Ano pa kayo? Ibusan ti kwarta tayo kakabsat. Alahan na dakas nga gasto tayo matamapan mangan sa paminsan ta restaurant ha. Hana dakas nga sumangputput di kita siyapi kadalasada tayo sa paminsan ha. Amen. Hana dakas ang magagatang tayo di kita barong arwatan tayo. Praise God for that. Pero no isulat pa kayo ibusan ti kwarta tayo. Nga awam man lang kakabsat ti maitid tayo nga para iti apo. That's not becoming a model Christian. Kaya nga sabi ko kanina, it's one thing to be called a Christian yung pupunta ka sa church, tinawag, Kristiyano yan. Kristiyano sa tawag, Kristiyano sa pangalan. Pero iba yung modelong Kristiyano. And a model Christian is known by his steadfastness. Nga uray bumasit tayo sweldo na kakabsat, itod na lang tayo tenth itiapo. Kat uray medyo bumagsak di income na, fulfill na mindful, nga mang fulfill tayo commitment na. That's his steadfastness. Nga hanak ko na, kasano nga rudan apo, bung mabamot ng ti income ko. Hana mabaling nga ibaga nga, excuse ak nga rudan apo ah nga jack ma-fulfill ti commitment ko kasi bumaba di income ko. Pero sa kanya sarili, sa Panginoon, sasabihin niya, Panginoon, uray bumaba ti income ko, mindful at nga mang-fulfill di commitment, kat uray magmagnaak nga mapanagbasa, uray pa'y magmagnaak, uray makiangkasak nga mapanagubra, basta fulfill at di commitment. That is steadfastness. And that is what makes you a model Christian. Kasi ti, 
Talaga kakabsat, ti pasamag, ti biyag. Pabago-bago. Unpredictable. Okay ngayon, KO bukas. Kung blessing, sunod-sunod. Kung trial, sunod-sunod din. Pero ang taong, ang kristyanong meron pong, you know, steadfastness sa kanyang puso, hindi magbabago yan. Are we a model Christian? Are we steadfast? Are we mindful? Pasalamat nga kayo. Pinapaalalahanan pa namin kayo ng inyong mga commitment eh. And you know, every time we give to you your account of your commitment, ilan nang binigay mo, ilan pang balance mo, that is helping you to become steadfast. Para hindi mo makalimutan na, teka, may commitment, teka. Yung iba nga eh, 2021 pa yung balance niya ng first fruit. May nag-message sa akin nung natanggap niya yung commitment, yung account. Sabi niya, ganyan, Pastor, thank you for giving this to us, for helping us grow in the grace of giving. Kasi ti commitment ko, nagdakil idi, tata, deto yung langanan. I pray nga may fulfill ko deto. That's his steadfastness. Na kahit marami kang gustong bilhin, pero hindi, uunahin ko muna, tatapusin ko tong commitment ko. Na kahit maraming pagkagastusan, tunog ko nagsakit, tumabalbalin, hamo kahit tiyag sakit, ti pamilya, tag gastos ka man din. Unpredictable. But in spite of that, you are mindful of your commitment. Ha nga detay, naglakatay latan kakabsat nga lipatan ka po kadigiti pasamak ti biyag. Rimang ay kabasit, naglakam latan nga ilinipat, kinugtara ng ti church, kinugtara mong ti pastor. Gapo laang ta, komportable ka na if you don't need the church. Ano gapo ti problema, naglakatay nga lipatan ka ko natay, apo, excuse na siguron. The Macedonian believers did not even think that they are exempt or exempted from the commitment that was being conducted by the Apostle Paul. In fact, their steadfastness had exceeded the expectation of the Apostle Paul. In our tapanda kagabsat, the expectation ni Apostle Pablo kadakwada. Ganon katindi ang mga Kristiyanong ito. Kaya nga, ngang gabi, listen to me, pagdating sa Christian life, ang totoong usapin dito, hindi yung mayaman ka, mahirap ka, may pinag-aralan ka, wala. Pag Kristiyanit ang pinag-usapan, ang totoong issue, ang totoong usapan dito, mga kapatid, ano ang attitude natin, gaano tayo ka-committed, gaano tayo ka-mindful sa ating commitment, sa ating responsibilidad na kahit ano ang dumating, kahit ano ang mangyari, we will fulfill our duty and our responsibility. Yan po ang totoong pinag-uusapan sa Christian life. That's the central issue. Amen? Oh, At ulit tayo ito sa Sunday kakapsat, palubos ni Apo. Nalangin tayo, Lord, thank you so much for reminding us tonight of the lives of the Macedonian believers that they are model Christians. Isuda apo ti husto nga pakakitaan di giti banbanag nga dapat issue, topic pagdating sa usaping Christian life. They are models of sufficient grace. Akita sa kanilang buhay ang patutuo ng biyaya. At yan ang gusto mo sa amin, Panginoon. At makita sa kanilang buhay of their steadfastness They didn't even think that they are exempted from the commitment na ginagawa ng Apostol Pablo para sa mga kapatirang naghihirap. Pero sila ay nagbigay and even more exceeded, Lord, the expectation of the Apostle Paul. Help us tonight to become examples, to become manifestations, Lord, of steadfastness. Salamat din sa paalala ngayong gabi na pag may mga problema kami, hindi lang dapat kami nakatutok sa solusyon ng problema, kundi inaalam namin ang purpose mo, Panginoon. 
and that will give us joy and sense of purpose in enduring the afflictions and pain of life. Thank you for reminding us tonight. In Christ's name we pray. All of God's people say, Amen. Amen.